Good morning. I am Akhlesh Latikia. I am the chair of US India Higher Education Partnerships Committee, and I'll talk to you about STEM professional master degree pathway. There is global demand for STEM talent to maintain technological superiority and hence an economic hedge. The world needs a high tech skilled workforce in electronics, photonics, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, molecular biology, and so on. This demand was recognized in 2021 by a joint statement of principles of the US Departments of State and Education. The statement announced a renewed U.S. commitment to international education. This is because research and innovation engendered by international students and faculty members strengthen higher education, benefit the U.S. population, and enhance national security. And they are good for the U.S. economy. International education contributed about $48 billion to the U.S. economy in 2019. After the COVID downturn, it still contributed about $38 billion in 2022 and probably $41 billion in 2023. Therefore, four departments of the U.S. government are presently coordinating on an international education strategy commerce on export promotion, education on global competency, state on foreign relations, and homeland security on visas. The international education strategy appears also in the U.S.-India initiative on critical and emerging technology, as well as in a joint statement from both countries issued in June 2023. In line with national policy, and international commitments, a pathway has been formulated for the collaborative recruitment by U.S. universities of self-funded STEM students from Indian universities for professional master degree programs. The Indian student either has obtained a bachelor degree from the Indian partner or will spend the fourth year at the U.S. partner in a dual or joint degree program for the bachelor's degree. Thereafter, the student will join the U.S. partner for a 12-month professional master degree program. This program could be super specialized in semiconductor processing, nanotechnology, photonics, display technology, communication systems, renewable energy, additive manufacturing, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, unmet microvehicles, quantum engineering, geospatial informatics, telemedicine, genetic medicine, and so on. In all respects, a professional master degree must be equivalent to a regular master degree. The credit requirements should be the same. However, the coursework must be practice-oriented with heavy emphasis on appropriate laboratory work culminating in a capstone project. In the Indian context, the holder of a professional master degree would be eligible to apply for entrance to appropriate doctoral degree programs in India. Collaborative agreements between U.S. and Indian universities will ensure the recruitment of high-caliber students whose courses at their Indian university have been especially enriched. The students will be self-funded and Indian lenders will find it attractive to provide loans of $60,000 per person in a cohort going for a professional master degree in a high-tech area. Plus, the families of many Indian students would fund this investment. A recent article in the Financial Express states that Indian students borrow about $50,000 for a master's degree program at a U.S. university. And here is an advertisement from an Indian lender offering amounts of as high as $90,000. Anyhow, the maximum cost should not exceed $60,000 for a 12 months program at most major universities that are not situated in mega cities. U.S. regulations have recently been changed to grant an optional practical training extension at an industrial setting 
for three years to STEM graduates, which should be very attractive to self-funded Indian students. The median annual salary for STEM OPT students is about $90,000 nowadays, so that significant repayment of the $60,000 loan during three years is definitely possible. Starting a professional master degree program will require some investments from the U.S. University. Suppose that the initial cohort comprises 15 self-funded students from two Indian institutions. A couple of professors of practice may have to be hired. Some equipment may have to be purchased or upgraded, both of which will require a lead time. Provision must also be made for maintenance and upgrade of equipment as time goes on. And planning will be necessary for annual growth of enrollment. What will be the benefits to the U.S. University? Most importantly, the tuition and other fees that the self-funded students will pay. In addition, the local economy will benefit from their food, housing, travel, and other expenses. Some of the professional master degree holders could join PhD programs. And the courses developed for the professional master programs may attract students from other streams. What will be the benefits to the Indian University? With the programmed mode of student mobility to a higher professional level, the Indian University will have increased attractiveness. Already, private Indian universities advertise student mobility programs to attract students. The prerequisite courses in the final year of the bachelor degree program will create educational linkages with U.S. faculty members, and those will lead to joint research programs. I'm very optimistic about the professional master degrees because Indian students in the United States have a marked preference for master degrees. This is borne out by data. In September 2023, some 316,000 Indians were enrolled at a college or university in the United States. Of the 253,000 Indians studying for a master degree, 243,000 were enrolled for a STEM discipline. These numbers include those actually on campus as well as on STEM OPT extension. So the professional master degree program is a 12 months on-campus program with an industrially attractive focus, costing about $60,000 and making the graduate eligible for a three-year STEM OPT extension with a median salary of about $90,000. Recruitment of an annual cohort from an Indian university to a U.S. university will bring down recruitment costs, it will build relationships between the two sets of faculty members, and it will inevitably lead to research partnerships. The U.S. government has taken significant actions in support of the international education strategy. It opened a brand new consulate with 54 windows in Hyderabad in 2023. This is the fifth U.S. consulate in India. The sixth and seventh will be opened in Bengaluru and Ahmedabad. The student visa process has been put on the fast track. 90,000 student visas were given to Indian citizens in summer of 2023. And students can now apply for a visa as much as one year before the beginning of the program in the United States. Thank you. Please contact me if you want to discuss anything further with me.